Thank you, Dr. Agarwal. And um, I feel a bit overawed um, being, having to present in this uh, august company with, um, with views that I expressed um, that are so passionate and, and high level. And I hope I'm not going to bring the tone down by representing my own views, um, which are not necessarily supported, as I, uh, I say, by, um, by facts, but um, maybe my interpretation from a, from a small country down south um, that's developing. Um, and I'm just, if you'll bear with me, I'll just start my presentation. So because of time constraints, I might not um, dwell too much on each of the slides, but just to give you an overview, we are relatively small population compared to India, 60 million. We've had about 55,000 deaths. Our target is to vaccinate 40 million South Africans by February 2022. And um, thus far, we've vaccinated fully less than 0.8%. So less than 1% um, of our population has been vaccinated, um, despite a very high mortality rate for Africa. We need to do about 190,000 shots a day. And I think we're standing at about 80,000. So for us, the situation is not, is not very rosy. Um, you'll see that we've actually got massive um, health cut um, reductions planned for the next three years. Um, and in, in real terms, we're going to be spending less per healthcare user than we did um, two years ago. So I, I think the picture that I'm, I'm trying to paint here is that we, we as a country cannot really afford, um, afford vaccination. And I think it's with that in mind that um, a, a problem has been targeted. Um, and I think the apparent um, problem is that patents, well, the problem is that patents have been identified as part of the problem or a large part of the problem. And I think hence the, um, the, the trips waiver. So, it's not just the TRIPS waiver, but, but with the, the idea being that, that patents are the problem, I think uh, we can identify in South Africa three solutions to this problem. And I'll, I'll look at them each briefly um, in place. The one is um, fixing the patent laws, and I've said fixing in inverted commas, um, the issue of compulsory licenses, and then, of course, the TRIPS waiver. So just looking at fixing the patent laws, we have uh, a coalition called the Fix the, the Patent Laws Coalition. Um, which has called for, for various reforms. Um, of course, it's calling for um, to ensure all the legal flexibilities of TRIPS are in, included in new laws, a moratorium on granting patents related to, to COVID and COVID-related products, and automatic compulsory licensing of COVID-related healthcare, etc. We've also got AT Academics who wrote to our president asking for strengthening of patentability criteria, providing for substantive examination, presumably so that, that um, um, patents are not granted um, as easily as, as, as it appears that they are, and to again also adopt flexibilities under the TRIPS agreement. So what are, what are the problems with this in my view? Um, well, legislation takes long to process. Um, the, our laws still need to comply with TRIPS and Substantive examination is not going to stop vaccine or drug patents being granted. I think there's this view that, that we wouldn't have these patents granted if it was, was for this. So the, the fixing the patent law is, is in my view, not a, a, a quick fix. It's not, going to, it's not going to help us vaccinate 190,000 people a day by, by, by February next year. Um, it's not going to get anywhere close to providing us with a solution to the current problem of, of vaccinating our population. So what about compulsory licenses then? Um, I don't need to go into these. Um, we have the standard um, abuse or lack of uh, supply provisions. I, I, I'm, I'm guessing as a, as a former British colony ourselves, our provisions are very similar to those in India. Um, and we also have the provision for the state to use patents under, under a compulsory license or to just to take them over in the case of emergency. It is a TRIPS compliant provision. 
um, and I think it conforms to the Doha Declaration. I want to just remind you, you might, might remember that in 2001, the US experienced um, anthrax attacks and, and I, I say only three people died. It was three people, it, there were deaths. Um, it wasn't three, three million people um, or, or, or what we're experiencing now, but still there was a, a, a raging debate about waiving Bayer Cipla, uh, ciprofloxacin patent. Um, you'll remember maybe that the US eventually negotiated a deal with Bayer. What you might not remember is that Canada, in fact, issued um, a compulsory license to Apotec, uh, but they were later forced, I think through public opinion um, or through world pressure to, to make a U-turn. But what I draw from this is that where, where it's a case of death um, and health at stake, that emotions are powerful drivers and, and that we'll grasp at, 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 at these opportunities to try and protect our population. So it's not, a, an unusual, uh, it's not unusual to be able to look at compulsory licenses um, as a solution. The question is um, why these have never been used in South Africa, um, even during our HIV AIDS crisis. Um, and I, I've given it some thought and because it seems to me the logical, the logical answer. Um, but I think it's possibly due to economic pressure from the first world. Um, both, uh, both Harry and Mr. Ravinda mentioned um, being placed on watch lists and, and, and economic pressure. And I think as a nation, India is able to um, resist those kind of pressures much more easily than a developing country, which is much more dependent on the goodwill of um, our trade partners, especially um, the US and, and, and the Europeans. Um, and I, I thought maybe we could, we could take a lesson from the AIDS pandemic. Um, in 1998, South Africa enacted changes, not to its patent um, regime, but to medicines control regime, which was to permit parallel importation of medicines. And this was heavily opposed by um, the US ph pharmaceutical industry backed by the US government, which resulted in South Africa being put on the special 301 watch list um, by the US trade representative. So that came close to um, imposing unilateral trade sanctions by the US on South Africa, which could have been devastating. Um, and the US trade representative used its discretion to withhold trade benefits, et cetera. Um, the policy changed with the Bush, uh, the Bush administration in the early 2000s, um, and they vowed to support poorer countries uh, gain access to essential medicines. Um, the, the case was dropped in 2001 um, by the US uh, pharmaceutical countries, uh, companies, excuse me. But interestingly, parallel importation has never been used. So we've got these provisions for import, doing pr parallel imports of of, of um, drugs into South Africa, but never been used. It could be that, um, that the, the drug companies eventually um, conceded on the AIDS drugs, um, but I, I think a, a lesson was, was maybe learned or, 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 or a big finger was waved at South Africa and, and heed was taken that if we are going to choose this route, um, that there might be consequences more severe than, than we'd like to deal with. So possibly um, for me, what, um, this is the reason that instead of looking to this uh, homegrown solution, we as a country opted for the, the TRIPS uh, patent waiver. Um, and I don't need to go through this information. Um, you already know it, um, uh, that, that there's no, there's no, um, real solution in sight, um, that it's going to be a long time before anything happens. Um, as we heard, it took uh, all of 16 years to get the Doha Declaration approved. So, so I don't think the TRIPS waiver is going to be, again, our necessarily the magical, the silver bullet that, that solves our problems. Um, and trying to sum up, um, what I see as the problems with all the approaches. So fix the patent laws, compulsory licensing trips. 
um, it's too long. Uh, it's going to take too long. Um, TRIPS consensus might take years if it doesn't take months. Um, compulsory licenses are still going to be subject to negotiation and court ratification, even if handled early. So you, you, we can't just unilaterally impose the, uh, a license. It has to be ratified by the court if the patentee doesn't, doesn't accept the conditions. Um, it's going to take too long. Uh, we're going to get herd immunity in our country, I think, the hard way. Um, and then what of the mutation? So if we, if we um, succeed on, 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 on being able to produce a vaccine, what happens then with the mutations? Um, will, that, will that, the same apply? Will we have to be going through the same process again? How does one force, as we've heard before, technology transfer and, and transfer of know-how? That hasn't been answered. Um, more importantly for, well, as importantly for us, and, and it's not, it, it's a problem that was alluded to by Harry, but, but, but one which is severe for us, which is manufacturing capacity. We are one of only five countries in Africa which has capacity to produce vaccines. And we only have two potential entities that could produce it. One um, is Aspen, a, a private pharmaceutical company. Um, and the other is BioVac, uh, which is a public-private partnership. Now, Aspen has an agreement with J and J to compound 400 million vaccines in four manufacturing plants. So one could say maybe yes, um, there you have something reasonable, but uh, surely they're going to be out of the picture due to the agreement with J and J. I'm sure that's capacity for them, um, and for them to opt out of that agreement wouldn't make commercial sense at least. Um, BioVac on the other hand can only develop bacterial vaccines and has limited capacity. So I don't think um, that's an option for us. We haven't produced a vaccine in South Africa in over 20 years. Um, so we have a significant skills gap. Um, we've also got a lack of R&D and investment in new technical production methods uh, because vaccines are typically lower lower a cost cost less to import so assuming we 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 took a bold move and, and and said well we're going to build our own facilities how long would that take um it took biovac 13 years to get their facility right for vaccine production now i'm not suggesting that that's that's the case in an emergency but it's certainly not going to happen overnight and i also think that a facility would probably cost more than we would be willing to spend on the vaccine. Um, so what happens to the facility after the pandemic has passed? Um, is it going to be competitive against Indian manufacturers? Probably not. Um, and we also have a lack of skilled personnel to run such a facility. The next problem that we will have, um, which is not an insignificant one, is regulatory hurdles. How long if we started manufacturing our own vaccine, how long to obtain regulatory approval? Um, again, just as an example, it took um, us five years to approve our first biosimilar. Um, again, I'm not suggesting that that's necessarily the case in, 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 a, in an emergency like this, but certainly it's not going to happen within weeks or months. Um, and then we've got an underrated problem in my view, uh, which are the, the logistics. Uh, we have a large rural population in remote locations. I think, I think a similar issue applies in India. Um, for us, simply transporting vaccines and storing them um, in the rural areas, I think will be a, a problem. And then we're going to have to have personnel to administer these vaccines, um, which will drain our already stretched healthcare system. So my my view on it is that the barriers to vaccine self-sufficiency are, are more economic than ip related mm. so even in the most positive case let's assume there was no there were no patents blocking us and and we had all the know how, how long would it take for us to set up viable manufacturing uh, facilities and obtain approval uh, i don't think that would happen within months um i think it's more likely years um and I think I said as South Africa is one of five countries that, that can manufacture in South Africa or has the potential to manufacture, it's so much worse in other, in other African countries. So a TRIPS waiver, I think to them, would mean even 
less than it would mean to us um, in South Africa. So it seems to me, um, and as I said, this is my personal view, is that, that, that patents um, are being used as a whipping boy for economic and logistical problems. Um, and, and that the TRIPS waiver is, is not necessarily as important for us as it's, as it's made out to be. Thank you very much.